Hi, I'm Ping Pong Patty, and I'm a yarn bomber. When I grow up, I'd love to be an artist, but right now, I'm a yarn bomber. And my crew is about seven strong. We're all fiber fiends. We are volunteers. Uh, we're in it to satisfy our mischievous natures. And uh, the camaraderie. It's a great group. They're great gals. They're powerful. They're worker bees. I couldn't want anything better in a crew. Um, all walks of life, all different, you know, natures of professions, mostly uh, small business owners, uh, mostly grandmas, uh, and uh, we're all in it. We're all in it because we love fibers. We've always either knitted or, or quilted or different things. Um, we have aesthetic ideas. We have strong uh, principles as far as how things look in the long run, how we put them on. Um, we care, you know, it makes a difference to us to see it done right and have it be beautiful. Um, it's our gift to the community and uh, I would hope, you know, the more people see, the more that they would like to give to the community in just small anonymous ways. Graffiti has finally elevated itself to a street art. It's a raw voice of the street, it's a commentary on our world from the bottom up, but it's still mainly a guy's sport. The girls want a piece of the action, but it's a wee bit too illegal for us. We want to get the job done and come home to a nice warm bed. Yarn bombing was inevitable. It's mainly a girl sport. And when you take it out of context and put it out on the street, when you start wrapping poles, benches, uh, chain link fences, all of a sudden you've got a beautiful feminine form of street art. Uh, it's... It's uh, ephemeral, it's tactile, it's mama's embrace meets urban blight. Uh, yarn bombing has been a phenomenon around the world. They've tagged tanks and buses and tombstones and airplanes and everything, cars. Uh, we've mainly done, you know, lengths of chain link up to 70 feet and tons of poles. And um, it's been an adventure. It's been an incredible journey. Uh, the people's reactions that we've had have been amazing. Uh, most people don't just love it, they love it. It's beautiful. It like makes Ojai better. <laughs> and people take pride in their community when they see this gift that's been given them. When you see Elliot the bear with his new itchy sweater, people take great pride that this gift was, was for them and they protect it. Uh, unfortunately, Elliot's sweater is gone. It only lasted two days and as sad as it is, as disheartening as it is, it's the nature of the beast. We put it out there uh, for people to enjoy. We know that it's no longer ours once it hits the street. We just hope people take care of them, but it's not always the case. I think our biggest motivating factor is just making people happy, making them smile, brightening their days, putting something beautiful where it doesn't belong, like on chain link, uh, doing our best. Um, I think we all love work. The whole crew loves the work of doing it and we, we know how to get it done. We make it up on the fly. Uh, we're not quite sure how to put knitted pieces on chain link. You just put knitted pieces on chain link. Um, you know, how to arrange different things. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's a very creative process. There's a lot of joy in it. And when we get the response from the community, we're, we're more than rewarded. You know, the the, the hugs and the happiness and, and, and it's wonderful when they don't know who we are that they're our spokespeople, they're telling us oh this great hit they did over there and you know they do this stuff and they're these 90 year old grandmas and, and you know I don't know how they get up in those trees um, and they know all about us but they don't know us so it's always fun when, when people are there supporting us and being our loudspeakers and and um, it's just just a blast, you know. We're we're all having a blast with it. And and there's a sad side too when, when our pieces are gone the next day, and it's a little shocking, you know. There, there it is a lot of work, you know. We do spend a lot of time at home, uh, drawings and color renderings and measurements and pictures and miles and miles of you know braided rope and pom poms to have it be gone, you know, within 24 hours. You know, it's. It's tough, but it's, you know, you get the, the goods with the bads. Uh, we had um, a lady that donated her afghan, and um, her husband was ill, and he passed away, and she couldn't bear to have the afghan in her house anymore, so she gave it to a neighbor to sell at a rummage sale. 
and um, we took the afghan and we wrapped a tree in the park with it. That one stayed up for months and months. We actually finally took it down. It kind of just crinkled off the tree. But it became an environment. There were flowers in the trees. People were picnicking under it. Kids were hugging it. They would put their babies and take pictures in the tree. Um, it was a wonderful thing. It was a, it was a beautiful happening spot. And uh, I was walking through the park one day and met the woman. And she, I go, well, that's funny. Look what they did to that tree. And she goes, that was my husband's, and I'm, I'm very honored that they did that. And I go, but it's funny. And she goes, and she started telling me this story, and I go, well, that was me. That was us, our crew. And she didn't hear me. She was kind of standoffish. And um, three times I said, well, that was us. And finally, on the third time, she goes, oh! and she started hugging and hugging and crying, and she was just so sweet. She never asked our names. She never asked, you know, who we were, why we did it, but she was just so touched. Uh, and it's affected a lot of people's lives like that. People take pride, like uh, some of the polls that we've done after a few rains, it looks like their pants have fallen down, and the neighbors will come out and they'll stitch them up and keep them all tidy and uh, take care of them. To date, we've bombed close to 200 hits, uh, mostly in the city of Ojai, town of 8,000 people. Um, and even though it's rural, there's a lot of blight, urban blight, street furniture and things like that. Uh, we have a drop box, a donation box, in the back of Bonnie Lou's if anybody wants to donate. Um, again, it's been a wonderful community to share this with. It's an, oh, it's an artsy community and it's just one more thing that um, people are very proud to be in a part of this community, this beautiful artsy community. We were taking down some trees. Uh, we had done uh, up one side of the street and down the other uh, on a street of um, pink and orange and black pom-poms and miles and miles of braided orange rope. And we were taking them down one day and this woman came up to us and she was livid. You know, we couldn't take that down. Every one of those pom-poms was a book that a kid read. How dare you take the, the kids put those up? How dare you take it down? You know, that was for the kids. I don't know where she got that. It was kind of funny, but she was protecting them. She knew they must have importance because why would anybody put yarn on trees, you know? I think my whole crew would love if there were more people that did mischievous things anonymously. Um, you know, buying people a cup of coffee or, or shaking the hand of a teacher or a policeman or, or putting up a art abandon, you know, take a piece of art and abandon it out there for anyone to take or everyone to enjoy, whatever you wish, but just just to make the world a more beautiful, smiling, kinder place to live would be uh, wonderful. Nighty night, Elliot! Hope that new sweater ain't too itchy for you. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs>